This video is going to cover 10-3 operations with radical expressions. The first thing you guys need to know is that there is such a thing as like radicals. It's very much in the same idea as like terms. Like radicals have the same radicand. And when I'm talking about a radicand, I mean, let's say we have a number like the square root of 6. Well, the, the 6 part, that's the radicand, the thing that is under the radical sign. So, for example, if we had 6 times the square root of 3, and then also negative 12 times the square root of 3, because we have these square roots of 3, these are like radicals. Like radicals can also be uh, fractions. So, because we have a 7 fourths, but there's still a radical 3 with it, all three of these are like radicals. Because, again, they have the same radicand. The radicand is the number that is underneath the radical sign. So in this example, it is 3. A basic non-example would just be two radicals that have different radicands. There is a 2 here. There is a 5 here. So these terms are not like radicals. All right, so when you have to combine these radicals together, here's what you could write down for your notes. Add or subtract the coefficients of your like radicals in order to combine them. I edited it a little bit, so just feel free to write that down as your starred note. Uh, so basically, just make sure that you have the same radicand and you will be able to combine these. Uh, take a look at the first problem. We have radical 11s, so these are like radicals. The only thing you have to do is uh, add the 6 and the 9 together and you will get 15. And then because there isn't anything else to do to the problem, 11 is uh, not a perfect square. You would just leave it alone and 15 radical 11 is your final answer. In part B, notice something very important. There is a 1 in front of the radical 3. Just like when you have parentheses, there's a number 1 multiplying your parentheses even though it's not written there. Well, it's the same idea with radicals. If you have the square root of anything, there is a 1 multiplying that radical in front of it without needing to be written there. But it matters in this case, because once the 1 is written here, we now have like radicals. 1 minus 5 is what you would be doing, and that would give you, uh, that would give you 4, negative 4, radical 3. So basically, just subtract the coefficients or add them and uh, make sure you have like radicals. I would say pause the video right now and just do these two problems at the bottom to make sure you got it. All right, so uh, question A, it says 7 radical 2 minus 8 radical 2. You just have to do 7 minus 8 and you get negative 1. And then the radical 2 part, well, that is the like radical part. Uh, essentially, it, it's kind of like it says 7x minus 8x. It's that same idea. Both terms have an x, so they're like terms. Both of these terms have a radical 2, so they are like radicals. And also, you don't need to write the negative 1 as part of your final answer. It is perfectly fine if you want to leave it as just the, uh, the negative radical 2. So uh, it could look like just negative radical 2 without the 1 written there. That would be fine as well. Part B, uh, 5 plus 2 is 7. The radical 5 just tags along, and that's your answer. Sometimes you will have to factor out a perfect square before you will be able to simplify your answer. So in this case, take a look at the first example. We have a, uh, we have a negative radical 12 right here. And because radical 12 has a perfect square, that being 4, that multiplies it, you basically have to split your radical 12 into radical 4 times radical 3. So in this particular problem, when you do that, your, uh, your radical 4, oops, let's back that up. There we go. Uh, in this problem, when you split radical 12 into your 4 and your 3, your radical 4, that's going to become 2. And once you do that, uh, you now have your radical 3 left over, and that now creates like radicals. So at the beginning of the problem, it might not have been apparent that these were going to be like radicals, but after you do simplifying with your 12, because 12 has a perfect square that divides it, you now have like radicals. So you can simplify them. 5 minus 2 is going to be 3. So 3 radical 3 is the final answer. Go ahead and pause the video and do the two practice problems at the bottom to see if you got it. 
In question A, 7 is a prime number. We can't simplify that any further. But the 28, that can become 4 and 7. The 2 in front of the radical 28, that stays there. But radical 4 becomes 2. And then the square root of 7 stays the same. Those two 2's multiply together to give you 4 radical 7. And then you will take your 4 radical 7 and you will add it to the 4 radical 7 at the beginning of the problem, and your answer will be 8 radical 7, and that's the final answer. In part B, your 5 is good, but your 32 could be written as 16 and 2. 8 times 4 would also work, but 8 has a perfect square that divides it, so you would have to keep going. 16 and 2 are the best choices for splitting up 32. You want to figure out the largest perfect square that divides the number. The 4 is good in the second part of this, but radical 18, that becomes radical 9 times radical 2. Your 5 drops down, radical 16 becomes 4, and your radical 2 drops down. The 4 drops down, and then radical 9 becomes 3, and then the radical 2 drops down. 5 times 4 is going to be 20 radical 2. Negative 4 times 3 is going to be negative 12, and then followed by a radical 2. I know the little Doseri trial logo is probably blocking this right now, so I'll say it again. It says 20 radical 2, and then there's going to be a minus sign in the middle, and then it will say 12 radical 2. So since you are subtracting 20 and 12, since they both have the same radicals now, your answer will be 8 radical 2. All right, guys, so here's where things get a little more involved. Uh, we are now going to be multiplying your radical expressions. And as you can see from problem A, you have radical 10 touching a set of parentheses. Whenever a number is touching parentheses, you're going to be using the distributive property. So uh, once you do that, you have to distribute, but then you still need to go back and look for those perfect squares to factor out like we just did on the previous example. So uh, once we do the distributive property, we are essentially getting a question that looks like what we just worked on. Uh, the radical 10 times radical 6, they are both radicals, so you can just multiply 10 and 6 and keep it under a radical sign. 10 times 6 is going to be 60. But the 3 right here, that is not under a radical. The uh, 10 is. So when you multiply 3 and 10, you do not get radical 30. Because again, the 3 is not a radical. It is a whole number. So you just leave it as 3 times radical 10. But again, at this point in the problem, we now have exactly the same idea that we had on the previous problem. We have two terms that have different radicals, but we are adding them together. So what we have to do is what this starred note up here at the top is telling you to do. Once you multiply with the distributive property, you need to look for perfect squares that you can factor out of the radicands. In this example, we have a radical 60. Radical 60 can be written as radical 4 times radical 15. And since 4 is a perfect square, that would become 2. But since radical 15 and radical 10 don't have any other perfect squares that divide them, we can't simplify this any further. And this is an example where your final answer is an expression that you cannot combine. And that's okay. That happens sometimes. So again, once we use the distributive property, this problem essentially became a copy of what we were just working on the previous slides. You now have to find the perfect square factors that divide the radicands and then simplify as much as you can. The practice problem down here, part A, is going to practice that, but let's just talk about example B and, and then we can do some practice. Uh, in example B, you are going to be using FOIL. Oh, whoops. Uh, one more thing you can just kind of write down for the sake of your notes because the radicands are different. That's why we're not combining. All right, in problem B, you would need to use FOIL in this case. As you can see, we have two binomials. There's no fancy shortcut way of dealing with this. You just have to use FOIL. So, when you multiply your first terms, radical 6 times radical 6 is going to be radical 36, but the square root of 36 is just 6. Your outer terms, radical 6 times radical 3, 
6 times 3 is 18. They're both radicals, so we have to write it underneath the radical sign. Your inner terms, negative 2, time, negative two radical 3 times radical 6. Notice how your negative 2 just tags along because the 3 and the 6 were both radicals, so the negative 2 has nothing to multiply with. But 6 times 3 is 18, so that's why it says a, a radical 18 right here. Same with your last terms. Uh, when you do negative 2 radical 3 times radical 3, again, your negative 2 is just tagging along because the radical 3s are both radicals. They are not whole numbers, so they cannot multiply with the negative 2. Radical 3 times itself will give you radical 9, but radical 9 can immediately be simplified into 3. So if you need to pause that and rewind just to see how all of those terms come about, please do so. Essential that you are able to use FOIL in this case just because it is, it's, it's just the way you got to get these answers. Um, so if you need to pause and go back again, please do so. Figuring out how to FOIL is very important for this section. Because uh, the rest of this is just combining like terms. You, uh, you have your radical 18, which has two perfect squares that can make it. Oh, and actually back that up one step further. Uh, the radical 18 right here, there's a 1 in front of it. And you have like radicals right here. So you would do positive 1 minus 2. And that would leave you with uh, negative 1 radical 18 when you combine those two terms. Next, just keep simplifying. Uh, your radical 18 can become radical 9 and radical 2. Your 6 comes down. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Radical 9 becomes uh, a, neg uh, a 3. And then the, uh, the negative 6 and the positive 6 right there, they cancel out to make 0. So the only thing you're left with is a negative 3 radical 2. Oh, whoops. The only thing you're left with is a negative 3 radical 2, and that would be your final answer. But again, practice makes perfect. You will not understand how to foil radicals until you start doing it on your own. If this, if this video and you not practicing is the only thing you do, it's not going to be enough. So what you need to do right now, pause the video, work out these three got it problems, and see how you did. And here are those same problems again. So uh, pause the video, and when you hit unpause, I'll start talking about them. All right, in problem A, you would start off by distributing your radical 2. Radical 2 times radical 6 is radical 12. Radical 2 times 5 is 5 radical 2. 12 can be rewritten as radical 4 times radical 3, and then the 5 radical 2 comes down. Radical 4 becomes 2, followed by a radical 3, and the 5 radical 2 stays the same. Because radical 3 and radical 2 are not the same radicands, this is your final answer. We cannot simplify 3 or 2 any further, so that's what you get. Problem B. You have the same binomial twice. It says radical 11 minus 2 to the second power. If you remember from section 8-7, the way you multiply a special case binomial when it's the same binomial twice is you square the first term in the binomial, you square the last term, and then to get your middle term, you multiply, <clears throat> you multiply your two terms together, and then you double the result. So, squaring radical 11 gives you 11. Squaring negative 2 gives you positive 4. When you multiply radical 11 times negative 2, you get negative 2 radical 11. When you double that, you are not doubling the 11 that is under the radical. When you double something, you are multiplying it by 2. So if you are going to multiply negative 2 radical 11 by the number 2, your 2's are the whole numbers that you can multiply. You cannot multiply your 11 because it is a radical. The 2 is a whole number. So when you do that correctly, you are going to be left with negative 4 radical 11. You then have to combine your like terms. And 11 and 4 are whole numbers, so they would combine to make 15. Because the 15 does not have a radical 11, this is your final answer, and you cannot combine anything any further.
The 15 does have a radical with it, but like all numbers that don't have a, uh, a certain thing written next to it, it's the number 1 that uh, is fulfilling that need because anything times 1 is itself and the square root of 1 is 1. So there is a radical 1 next to the 15, but because radical 1 is not the same thing as radical 11, they are not like radicals, and you have to leave it as that as your final answer. Uh, last one, part C. You have to use FOIL. So here is a walkthrough of uh, all that happening. Uh, radical 6 times 4 radical 3. The 4 tags along, but the 6 and the 3 make radical 18. Radical 6 times 3 radical 6. The 3 tags along, but radical 6 times itself, that's just 6. Because remember, radical 6 squared, that's going to equal 36. But we're taking the square root of that. Or, I'm sorry, whoops, back that up. Uh, radical 6 times itself is going to give you 6. And that's because uh, radical 6 times radical 6 is radical 36. And the square root of 36 is just 6. So in general, when you are multiplying a radical by itself, you can just write down that final result without the radical sign. You know, it's something you can kind of do in your head. Uh, in any case, your inner terms, negative 2 and 4 will make negative 8 but radical 3 times itself will be a normal 3. Negative 2 times 3 for your last terms, that's going to be negative 6. But then radical 3 times, its, uh, times radical 6, that's radical 18. So now start simplifying. Your 3 and your 6 and your negative 8 and 3, those are both whole numbers, so you can multiply them to get 18, and also a negative 24. Your radicals have the same radicands, so you can combine them. 4 minus 6 is going to be negative 2, radical 18. Your 18 and the negative 24, that is now going to be subtracted to give you a negative 6. Your 18 can now be split into a radical 9 and a radical 2, and the negative 6 drops down. The radical 9 becomes 3. The negative 2 in front multiplies the 3 to give you negative 6. The negative 2 tags along, and then the negative 6 becomes part of the final answer. Again, there is a radical 2 here, and there is no radical with the negative 6 at the end. So that means these are not like radicals, and that is your final answer. All right, here's the last part of this section, guys. Uh, kind of a tricky one. Here's something new. Conjugates. Conjugates are basically opposite binomials. So, for instance, we have uh, radical 7 plus radical 3 and radical 7 minus radical 3. These are conjugates. They are opposites. When you take two binomials that are conjugates and you foil them together, the product is going to make all of the radicals go away. The product of conjugates will always be a difference of squares because basically all you're doing when you multiply opposite binomials is you are just multiplying your first term and your last term. I'll say that again. Memorize it. When you multiply conjugates, the only terms you're multiplying are the first terms and the last terms. The middle terms will cancel out when you use FOIL. Here's how conjugates are going to be used. When you have a denominator that involves radicals, you are not done with the problem. It's not simplified. You have to rationalize the denominator. You have to make the radicals go away. And we did this in 10-2 towards the end. So go back and check that video near the end, and you'll see a review of that. But essentially, here's what we're going to be doing. Uh, in this example, we are going to be multiplying the denominator by the conjugate of radical 7 minus radical 2. Uh, again, here's the original problem right up here. The denominator says radical 7 minus radical 2, so that means in order to get rid of that denominator's radicals, you have to multiply by the conjugate. This would be what you'd want to write down for the sake of your notes. Uh, but as you can see right down here, we have radical 7 minus radical 2, so that means the conjugate of that is radical 7 plus radical 2. And remember, whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you must also do to the top. So both the numerator and denominator have to be multiplied by the conjugate. So when you do that, 
Again, the middle terms will cancel out if you do the entirety of FOIL. You only need to do radical 7 times itself and then radical 2 times itself. Radical 7 times radical 7 is 7. Radical 2 times radical 2 is positive 2. But because we have a negative multiplying a positive, we get a negative 2. Well, once you do the whole conjugate thing, the problem now just becomes a simplifying issue. So I'll say again, the reason why we're doing this, your denominator has radicals in it. You are not simplified when your denominator has radicals. In order to get rid of a binomial that involves radicals, we have to multiply that binomial by its conjugate, the opposite binomial. Because you are multiplying two binomials together, you are using FOIL. But because the binomials are opposites, your middle terms will cancel out if you do the entirety of FOIL. So the only two terms you need to really FOIL are your first terms and your last terms. So, once you multiply your denominators, you are left with a normal 7 and a negative 2. You would then subtract 7 and 2, and you would get the 5 that you see right here. But 5 and 10, when you simplify, uh, 5 goes into 10 two times. So you can actually cancel that 5 out. And then you would use the distributive property with, uh, with, with your 2. And then that's how you would get your final answer right down here at the bottom. Using conjugates will make more sense once you practice it on your own because, again, if you do not practice about two or three of these, it's probably not going to stick. So uh, pause the video and give this example a try or look at the first step and then try to pick up from wherever you, uh, you need me to help you. All right, so here's the problem. Pause the video and then unpause it when you're ready. So here we have a fraction where the denominator says radical 10 plus radical 5. The conjugate that you're going to multiply by is radical 10 minus radical 5. That says positive. The opposite would be negative. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must also do to the top. So once you multiply your denominators and you FOIL them, here's what you're going to get. I'm going to do this in full without the shortcut so you can see the entirety of it. Uh, when you FOIL, here's what's going to happen. Radical 10 times itself is going to be 10. Right there and right there. Radical 10 times negative radical 5. That's negative radical 50. Positive radical 5 times positive radical 10 is positive radical 50. They're opposites. They'll cancel out. And then positive radical 5 times negative radical 5. That's negative 5. A positive times a negative is a negative. Radical 5 times itself is 5. Your middle terms cancel out. I said this was going to happen. This will always happen when you FOIL conjugates because they're opposites. The middle terms will always cancel to 0. So the only thing you're left with is 10 minus 5, which is 5. So all of that was just to get a denominator of 5. So again, essential here. The denominator had radicals. The way you get rid of a radical binomial is you multiply by the conjugate. So when we did that, we got a 5 in the denominator. But remember, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to also do to the top. So the negative 3 is now going to multiply the radical 10 minus radical 5. Because negative 3 and 5 do not have any common factors to simplify, your final answer would actually be negative 3 radical 10 plus 3 radical 5. We can't simplify 3 and 5. They don't have any common factors, so you would be done right here. All right, guys, here's um, some more practice problems for you to do. Uh, pause the video, do them, hit on pause, and, and then you'll hear an explanation. All right, so problem one, there is a uh, 1 in front of the radical 3, and 4 plus 1 is 5, so you get 5 radical 3. Number two, 3 radical 6 stays the same, but radical 24, that becomes radical 4 and radical 6. Radical 4 becomes 2. So you now have 3 radical 6 minus 2 radical 6. That's going to leave you with 1 radical 6. But you actually don't need to write the 1 there, so radical 6 by itself is perfectly fine. 
Number three, use the distributive property with the radical 7. Radical 7 times radical 3 is 21, radical 21, and radical 7 times a negative 2 is negative 2 radical 7. But you can't simplify it any further, so that would be your final answer. Number 4, you have the same binomial twice, radical 5 minus 6 squared. You need to square the first term, so when you square radical 5, you get 5. When you... Uh, square, oops, when you multiply your terms together, radical 5 times negative 6 is negative 6 radical 5. But remember, you have to double that. So when you double the negative 6 radical 5, you get negative 12 radical 5. And then, you need to square negative 6, that's positive 36. You could foil this out and you would get the same answer that I'm getting. I'm just trying to show you the shortcut. 5 and 36 make 41, and the negative 12 radical 5 just comes down as part of your final answer. Number 5, we have a binomial where there is a denominator that has a radical in it, so that means we have to use conjugates to get our answer. You will have your initial setup, but because it says 3 plus the square root of 2, the conjugate that we're going to use is 3 minus the square root of 2. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to also do to the top. When you multiply your denominator, you just have to do the first terms and the last terms. 3 times 3 is 9. Radical 2 times negative radical 2 is negative 2. Your numerator, you have to distribute the 7 radical 5. 7 times 3 is 21. The radical 5 tags along. 7 radical 5 times negative radical 2 well, you're going to get a negative 7, but uh, you're actually going to get, oh, 5 times 2 is going to make 10. Made a little typo right there. Hold on one second. There we go. Uh, so now just continue to simplify the problem. Uh, five, radical 5 and radical 10 are not like radicals. But your denominator says seven min or 9 minus 2, and that's just going to be 7. Here's the way you would simplify it at the end. 7 in the denominator will cancel with the 7 in the numerator and the 21 in the numerator, because they're all divisible by 7. So your 21 becomes 3, and the radical 5 tags along. The negative 7 right here, well, negative 7 times 7, that's going to be negative 1. So it's going to go away and just leave you with the uh, radical 10. Whoops, let me just erase that. Hold on. Uh, when the 7 cancels out, the only thing you would be left with is that radical 10. There we go. So that is the final answer. All right, uh, number 6. Again, you have conjugates in the denominator. So here's your initial problem, radical 7 plus 2. So the conjugate is radical 7 minus 2. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to also do to the top. Again, when you multiply two conjugates together, you just multiply the first and last terms. Radical 7 times itself is 7. Uh, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. In the denominator, 7 minus 4 is 3. So that's what you get. If you can do it in your head, cool. If you have to write it out, that's fine. Your numerator, use the distributive property. 6 times radical 7 is 6 radical 7. And 6 times negative 2, negative 12. Your 3 can divide 6 and 12, so you have to. Uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, the radical 7 tags along. And negative 12 divided by 3, negative 4. And that's your final answer. Uh, I believe 7 and 8 are going to appear as answers on the next slide, so uh, you can just see that right now. There we go. Oh, here are some more practice problems instead. Uh, pause the video, do as many of these as you want. The uh, answers are going to be on the next slide. And here are the answers. So uh, please come in and ask questions. This is a somewhat tricky section uh, that you've got to be able to do. So by all means, do as many practice problems as you need. Come in and ask questions, and I'll see you guys in class.